He who does not ask questions learns nothing. So people sometimes say to me when I'm teaching, this question might sound silly. But no question is silly, is it? Because each question leads to uh, more information. <laughs> Just to add to what my brother was saying, right? About um, these uh, corporates, these big corporations. I mean, have a look at the, uh, the Congo. It's been an ongoing uh, war, I don't know for how decades, right? But the funny thing is, um, these people, they don't have, they don't manufacture weapons. Exactly. But they have the most advanced weaponry. And where, who is giving them that? The weapons. African countries, they don't manufacture weapons. They're not giving them. Yeah, yeah, no, no. It's an exchange. Selling them. Yeah. They're selling they're selling them. What? And they have a loan for that that will have to pay exactly. for... And well, do you know, the Congo is the most richest country in Africa, right? And what they do, right, where the mines are, they are heavily fortified. They have planes that fly, fly in, fly out. Fly in, fly out, you know? Why, did, why do they do this? They say, just keep them fighting each other. We'll just take their resources. Yeah, so the continent of Africa is huge, obviously, um, but it is still being exploited. Um, in this case, by sort of colonial companies, thinking of, of the immediate thing that comes to my mind as an archaeologist is mining. So um, uh, as a continent, there are an incredible natural resources. Um, so mining of things like diamonds um, really comes to mind, really at the forefront, I think, because a lot of work that I've done has been in southern Africa and um, archaeology that has been recovered through diamond mining. Um, and really large amounts of, of land are, are essentially um, zoned for diamond mining. So it means that these areas are places where people aren't allowed to really go. Um, they're militarized zones. Um, and they have been since colonial companies were set up to start extracting um, things like diamonds. So one of the projects I've recently worked on is a, um, is a shipwreck that was found in Namibia during diamond mining operations. And one of the real, I think, questions when archaeological materials are found in, in mining zones is, Sort of who owns that material, how is that material then um, sort of excavated, how is heritage preserved in these in these mining zones, but also of course how are people actually able to access this land. So um, it's still very much a sort of controversial issue. Um, I think in the case of this shipwreck it was a really uh, successful story in some ways because archaeologists were called in and the shipwreck was excavated um, eventually it's going to go into the National Museum of Namibia. So um, in that case, the Namibian government really pushed for there to be a sort of salvage of, of heritage. Um, but that meant that the diamond mining operation stopped for a couple of weeks. It meant that the mine lost probably millions of pounds because, you know, the, the archaeologists were there excavating and they weren't actually mining for diamonds. So I'd say, yeah, in my opinion, in, in terms of archaeology, in terms of the heritage, um, the, the mining industry is, is, is a threat. But in many ways, I think archaeologies and, and governments and heritage organizations could actually work together because that, that could be a way of actually finding more um, material and, and obviously preserving it for the future in museums, but also kind of... Um, Having having real kind of access to people's past, I think, is something that's really missing in a lot of places. Um, and so that connection to material culture and to the past is actually incredibly important. So that being destroyed is is also a threat, obviously. I think so. One of the interesting things that's happening in a lot of um, countries, which I'm just thinking like Botswana and Namibia, places where I know more of, um, there are starting to be sort of more governmental controlled um, uh, parts of the mining industry. So, for example, um, Namdeb in Namibia um, is 50% owned by De Beers and 50% owned by the Namibian government. So there are cases like that where the government is starting to sort of at least take, you know, they're starting to take back control. Botswana is a good example of where the government has actually really... Um, 
taken more ownership Mm -hmm. of the mining industries and regulated them. One of the real um, keys is actually having investment in museums and places, not just museums, but just places where this material can go, where jobs can be created in the heritage industry, um, tourism creation. You know, there's a there's a lot of real benefits for objects being returned and going back to, you know, country, African countries. And it's exciting. It's a really exciting time to be in a museum, working in a museum and working on these issues because it's just such new opportunities, I think, for relationship building and for, I think, the main thing I always say is for repair. It's it's really about rebuilding relationships and repairing um, things that have happened in the past and, and, and working towards building a much, much better future for these, for these objects. It shouldn't be 50-50 with colonial corporations. It should be 100% for the African continent and its people. We wish to dedicate this film to all the people that are being slain by these imperial organizations. Rest in power to Griffith Lange, Ruth First, Ahmed Timo, Anton Lebowski, Patrice Lumumba, Solomon Malungu, Chris Hani, Ford Kalata, Matthew Guniwe, VAC Mini, Dag Hammersgold, Felix Mame, Martha Mame, Osende Yafana, Abdel Kingu, Omniobe, Thomas Sankara, Ken Sharawiwa and Agoni Nai, Dele Giwa, MKO Abiola, Sylvanas Olympio, Samora Machao, Macho Kaka, Olaf Palme, Robert Subuki, Tom Maboya, Nodi Kiawo, Mendy Baka, and to the 52 miners buried alive by Barrett Gold in their militarized zones. The list continues. Learn more about anti colonial movements on theblackoutstrike.com. A little continua, struggle continues. Give a fuck, but they do not give two shits. So press some black voices till it's time to play music. Or when it's time to run a mile and get a golden Olympics. There's nothing new about colonialism. Nothing's changed but the symbolism. Giving millions but taking trillions. Talking about giving back but we're only getting back trinkets. One bird, goons control both sides, conquer and divide, time to bring the truth to light.